Hi friends, host Eric here, host talking with fans people. Watch this video, I read this thing here. I'm gonna read Jack Patton's comment. Is it, the individual named light bulb made a fair point, although not fully stated from a business standpoint, how do you grow the community and promote engagement without antagonizing and alienating new members or anonymous users of the individual given authoritative power just like they have of kicking people out of the room and rude behavior in conversation. It's not a capacity issue. Um, to support, it's not a capacity issue. As Suzanne proved light bulb right by kicking her out of the room from the beginning because she did not like the criticism. To support light bulb's claim, I witnessed several instances by rough footage in which Suzanne kicked anonymous users simply because she had the power and or because of subjective social hierarchy and misconduct she deemed unfit despite minimum capacity. To move forward in terms of growing the community and generating future revenue, this is an interesting risk to assess. What is the severity and how this impacts state, future state of business? Will this impact the value of long-term profitability? From my overall impression, it is clear this is not a depiction of S.E. Poor from Suzanne. In fact, SE Creative is fierce and on display, full frontal. No. Real SE Polar simply is incapable of holding such effortless, steady control of physical strength as exemplified throughout this entire interaction by Suzanne. In fact, most allies squirm under volitional force and pressure. They simply do not value SE to embody such physical aggression. Further allies are generally infantile and democratic. I prefer not to enforce hierarchical structures and or favor authoritative positions as exemplified distinctly by Suzanne, or aggressive demeanor and favoritism of authority hierarchy is just better values. Okay, well like that's a good slam right there. But it's all bullshit. It's completely bullshit. You did a great job of the slam, Jack, but there's not one shrek of it, shred of anything but bullshit in there. What do I mean? Well, first of all, the whole thing's predicated on some, some nonsense. Like, from a business standpoint, how do you grow the community and promote engagement without antagonizing and alienating new members or anonymous users? It's the individual given power to play the habit of kicking people out of the room and rude behavior. Well, I mean, the the ridiculous framing of that is it, it, it's such a question beggar, right? From a business standpoint, how do you grow the community given that we assume light bulb's point is accurate? Now, what makes it sort of effective is he then goes ahead and says it is accurate. We know it's accurate because it's obviously not a capacity issue. Suzanne proved light bulb right by kicking her out of the room from the beginning because she did not like the criticism. Now, there's an additional reason to believe that light bulb's right. To support light bulb's claim, I've witnessed several instances in which Susie kicked anonymous users simply because she had the power and or because of the so subjective social hierarchy misconduct she deems unfit despite minimum capacity. To move forward in terms of growing the community and generating future revenue, this is an interesting risk to assess. What is the severity and how will this impact the future state of business? Will this impact the value of long-term profitability? So then, Jack says, how do you succeed when you've got this drag upon things? But then, he says, and we do have this drag upon things, because light bulb's right. Susie does kick out arbitrarily because we have an example of it. And Susie does kick out regularly because I can support that claim as well. Now, here's the thing, though. You say at the start of this, from a business standpoint, how do you grow the community for engagement without antagonizing any of Well, How to go about doing this? Hell no.
The problem is people don't understand what the alternative is. They weren't there in the trenches battling against trolls, people fucking around. People ride the gray lines like this so that they can get away with some bullshit. And, and they come to my party and spill drinks just to watch me clean them up. One realizes the futility of prioritizing a completely value upholding approach to the rules because it's impossible without destroying all the values. You learn to trust your intuition about people, their purpose, whether they're really engaging in a meaningful way or whether they're just really trolling and trying to be a bitch. And the bottom line is, my number one warrant in all this argumentation about Susie is I trust Susie, I love Susie, and I'm not using the word lightly. I love Susie. She's my platonic wife. She's my no-naked wife. I trust her with my life. So, if Susie kicked somebody, and she just did it because she was in a bad mood, and and someone goes, hey, Susie just kicked somebody for no good reason, just because Susie's in a bad mood. My only real response to that is, oh good, I hope that made her feel better. And Susie doesn't like this line of argumentation from me. But I'm making this line of argumentation at all with Lightbulb because she kept hammering that that I get it, you have to you have to use Susie. Susie's useful for you. And you're not gonna change anything because Susie's too useful and it makes it's too practically beneficial for you to not to not make, do anything to Susie or enforce any rules or whatever well all those things might be true that it, it was about practical benefits or something I, I don't even know if it is but I'm not going to do anything like scold Susie about anything because I love and trust her and I'm assuming that she had a reason that was good enough for her and that's good enough for me Beyond that, though, the reason she doesn't like it is I'm not actually defending her behavior. I'm saying she can act bad if she wants. And that leads people to think that I think she's acting badly. I don't. If she's kicking anonymous people, good. I don't like anonymity. Anonymity is totally fucking gay. Sorry. If... And I I only listen to words that are said by agents, by identities, by people. I don't like to talk to words that are generated by a bot, for example. I could talk to Cleverbot, but I don't want to talk to Cleverbot. I'd like to know who I'm talking to. After all, they know who they're talking to. I don't have any sympathy for anonymous people. I have none. They're not contributing anything of value at all. It's a weird paradox. The way to keep this place as free as it is, and it's extremely free. Like, anyone can come in and do whatever the fuck they want, pretty much. The best way to keep it extremely free is to have a king. Be as non-democratic as possible. Only a king really respects liberty. 
Only a king can really respect liberty. That's what Susie's doing. She's respecting liberty by by expecting people to to deserve it by displaying they understand how to exercise it. And if they choose to exercise it by just gunking up other people's ability to exercise it, by being disingenuous, dishonest, by crying wolf, by doing all the shit that people do, all the different all kinds of trolling, I mean, sure, she can kick their ass out. So what? They can come right back in. It's not like she's physically maimed them or something. They got kicked for five seconds. They can come right back in. Jesus fucking Christ. If they get booted, booted, well, they might have to make a new account where they might have to come from a, a incognito window or something. If somebody is halfway decent at all, they're under no risk of being randomly abused by Susie. And you say, well, what about the anonymous people? They're not somebody. They're nobody. Right? Directly, exactly, specifically, they are not any somebody. I refuse to even consider non-people having the rights of people. Because why would they? The second one is <coughs> kind of weird. <coughs> Relationships I've had with an INTP woman. Campbell was the same thing. It's this weird kind of plumantic love. Okay, Campbell and I, I mean, we loved each other. We spent all our time together. But we never touched each other. I was married. And I knew the marriage was ending, but I wasn't going to do anything before it officially did. I wasn't 100% sure. Candace wouldn't tell me whether I should fight for the marriage or against it. Anyway, I never did anything with Kimball. But I definitely loved her. And I cried when that fell apart and stuff. But with Susie, I have the strangest three-person marriage in history. Um, Susie and I are strictly no naked. I've never seen her naked or anything like that. Never touched her. Never will. I'm in a happy relationship with my wife, Kimberly. And also, I love Susie. And I'm in love with Susie. And Kimberly likes Susie a lot, too. And she knows that I'm kind of in love with Susie. But she understands that it's safe because Susie's got a boyfriend and everything and lives in Norway and and is is super nice and gracious about whole thing because of course you know I'm I'm just like I love you Susie and no you know neither Susie nor Kimberly says Eric that's not okay because 
you're in a relationship with Kimberly and you shouldn't say that thing. They both get it. They're like... Eric doesn't know what the fuck he... He feels, really. But he just values both these people immensely. And he also values his commitments immensely. He's never I, I will never cheat on Kimberly or Stray or anything like that. Um... Including, like, just, like, trying to see somebody else naked or stuff like that. Nothing like that. But I also I like being honest, you know? And so I feel lucky because I get to be in love with Susie and still have her be my friend and she doesn't ever have to sleep with me and I don't have to feel sexually frustrated and Kimberly doesn't have to feel threatened and Susie always sides with Kimberly so Susie's helpful to Kimberly and if I'm getting uppity or something and sometimes Susie's more effective than Kimberly at explaining Kimberly's position to me so that I understand Kimberly's position better. And she understands which kind of arguments I like. Um, and I've never met her boyfriend. Or talk to him or anything. But. He doesn't have anything to worry about. <laughs> Susie loves the shit out of him. And. Uh, I. I'm stoked that. He's there in that position. To solidify the. Okayness of my my insistence on both being in love with Susie and still being her platonic friend without it creating any negative feelings. Because I don't know. I just... Susie's so rarely wrong about anything. And, and I mean, strategically wrong. She's tactically wrong sometimes. But I'm almost never tactically wrong. And she's almost never strategically wrong. This guy with the SC thing here, when she's SC creative. No. The fact that she pulls the trigger on shit. <laughs> Essie is the following through of that which has already been decided. Or that's it's that's if you prior if you value its metaphysical aspect. If you're framing with its physical aspect, then you're saying let's pull the trigger in real time to good effect. But you'll note in that instance, she pulled the trigger in real time to bad effect. That was an example of her not following through on what's been decided and deciding quick in real time. That's an example of her SE polar 
being blind to the fact that there's this SE concern and it fired off and oops like when I burst into tears and shit I'm FI polar doesn't mean I don't have FI it means I don't get it she doesn't get SE I don't get SE either I know I hate it see that's the thing I hate SE a lot more than FI FI is a make me mad kind of thing SE I think it's evil in other words I don't like SE behaviors like that neither does Susie what she does like is <laughs> she likes winning there's no doubt that Susie likes winning um, but so do I but it doesn't make me SE creative there have been plenty of afternoons where I do exactly that same thing Susie did without even a second thought I just kick people because I don't you know, fuck you, you're you're making my soup too salty. That's a good enough reason for me. I didn't used to be like this. Prior to the big the Courtney, Yalor, Susie, Eric Fracus. Fracus. Fracus was on particularly my refusal to engage in SE, my refusal to follow through on keeping Courtney banned. In that process, I learned a lot about what it means to be a leader. What it means to be a leader is to make people feel safe. I know that Susie is an excellent leader because she makes me feel safe and If you're coming in and talking shit to Susie in the room for no good reason, or even even with a good reason, then Susie should not worry about what her SE polar suggests, frankly, one way or the other because she already has to put up with enough shit and if Susie doesn't feel like putting up with yours and kicks you get over it she, I'm pretty goddamn sure she's kicked me before I think she kicked me one time for saying something stupid I don't know I don't care it's fine. If you're blanky, if you're anonymous, and you want to occupy a space and listen, I've seen Susie allow that many times. That's the thing. It's very backwards. Being there anonymously 
and able to express and not be held to account for it in any meaningful sense. In other words, asking for the bumpers on the bowling alley lane because left to your own devices, you're going to shoot into the gutter. Well, when the adults show up to play bowling, then you need to go over to the arcade while we bowl properly. That's fine if you want to play like that, you know. Um, I, I'm very fussy. And if I get kicked unfairly one time, I'm going to be, oh, um, yeah. Here's the thing. Certain kinds of complaints work well. You come in and you say, I like Susie a lot. I think she does a great job in general. But I have one clear example of where she did something unfair to me. I don't want to complain about it. I will say, well, let me hear it. And then I'll hear it. And Susie will say whatever she wanted to say or say anything. And if you are correct, then I will say, well, I agree with you. I My conclusion is that Susie engaged in an unfair behavior against you there. And to the extent that she wishes to um, humor some sort of procedural solution, then obviously whatever she wants. But if you'd like to have a equilibrium restoring action of some sort, then it needs to be quick, easy, symbolic because the only harms you incurred were quick, easy to remedy and symbolic. To me, the most important thing should be if I say, you are right. Um, Susie was, did act unfairly in that one instance. Then that should be enough. Because if I say that, then Susie agrees with me. Because I wouldn't say it unless it withstood full TI scrutiny. And then it's over. If you come in making broad claims, like Susie's harming the community, or Susie boots people all the time, or Susie's mean or says rude things to people. Susie prevents new people from getting into this. That's why the community is so, so small. Uh, well, I'm not interested in, in arguing about claims that can't be sustained without a shitload of evidence. I'd rather adjudicate things one instance at a time if I have to adjudicate them at all. But even then, remember that Elsie pointed out I should not use that word so much, so I'm going to change that going forward. Thank you, Elsie. Uh, I knew that, but it's a, it's a habit. Um, a lot of people think Susie is the reason they're here because she made them feel very comfortable coming in. Regardless, I don't know what to say about it, all of this is I feel already like I'm lending too much credence to the notion to even address it at all. Because it's coming from Lightbulb, who has her own amount of metaphysical equity around here, and who I respect, and whose presence I appreciate, I felt the need to afford it more legitimacy than I would for most people. But the gist of my take on that whole thing is well, Lightbulb doesn't like Susie. Everyone's all concerned about the business future. Jack there is like, oh, the business grow. 
Really? You mean lose less money? Hopefully. Why is it losing money? See, ever since you brought Susie on, not nothing to do with Susie. This is a systemical, systemically designed to be a poor performer. It's a poor performer, this channel, in every sense of the word. To the extent that the channel has any future, to the extent that I have any future, to the extent that anything in the world good will happen for me, for the community, for Santa, for Kimberly, it will happen with Susie right here. Thanks for watching Talking with Fans People. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. And, uh, praise Yaylor. Also, praise the Arch Admin.